Hello dear students and welcome to my channel. Have you ever wondered how electricity is generated without direct contact? Ever thought about how your phone gets charged wirelessly? Well, every time you see a wireless charger or see a power line stretching across the horizon, you're witnessing the magic of electromagnetic induction. That's our today's topic, electromagnetic induction. So, what exactly is electromagnetic induction? Well, it's a process through which a changing magnetic field induces an electric current in a nearby conductor. To understand this, let's start with a simple scenario. Imagine you have a coil of fire and you bring a magnet close to it. As the magnet approaches or moves away, we witness the magic of induction. Michael Faraday a genius this time, explored this phenomenon for the first time. Michael Faraday found out that when the magnetic field around the coil changes, it induces an electric current in the wire. This groundbreaking observation led to the formulation of Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. But to explain electromagnetic induction in more detail, Faraday introduced the concept of lines of force. He said that a bar magnet like this has these lines of force that originate from the north pole of the magnet and end up at the south pole of the magnet. Now let's talk about a crucial concept that is linked with magnetic field lines. That's called the magnetic flux. Magnetic flux is actually the currency of a magnetic field. Imagine you have a coil fire and you want to know how much magnetic field is passing through it. That's where the magnetic flux comes in. Now, picture the coil as a net and the magnetic field lines as fish swimming through it. The more fish that swim through the net, the higher the magnetic flux. So now in our case, the fish are the magnetic field lines and net is our coil. Mathematically, we express magnetic flux denoted as phi as the product of the magnetic field B passing through the coil of wire and the coil's area A. And if instead of just one turn in the coil, you have a number of turns in the coil of wire, then the magnetic field lines passing through these turns of coil is called the magnetic flux linkage or just the flux linkage. And hence, flux then, flux linkage then could be defined as the magnetic flux phi times the number of turns. So now connecting all of these dots, if this magnet is moved towards this coil fire, the bulb lights up momentarily. If the magnet is brought back, the bulb again lights up, indicating that there's an EMF induced in the coil fire if the magnetic flux through the coil fire changes. And the meter here would show you the deflection on one side if it's moved towards the coil and the deflection on the opposite side if the magnet is moved away from the coil of fire. As the magnet is continuously moved in and out of this coil of fire, that induces a continuously changing EMF across the coil of fire. Now let's look at a few factors on which the induced EMF depends. First of all, let's try and bring the magnet close to this just one loop of wire and just have a look at the EMF induced. So if the magnet is moved towards this single coil of fire, it does induce an EMF, but the value of the EMF is pretty small. Keeping everything constant, if the number of loops is increased and then the magnet is moved towards the coil and away from it, you'd see a higher EMF. That means the EMF is influenced by the number of turns in the coil of fire. Secondly, if the strength of the magnet is increased, if you've got a stronger magnet and that is moved towards the same coil of fire, you'd see greater EMF as indicated by this meter. That means the strength of the magnet increases. That increases the induced EMF as well. And then keeping all the other factors constant, if the area of the loop is increased and then the magnet is moved towards the qualifier, a higher EMF is again induced in the qualifier, indicating that the induced EMF also depends on the area. 
And lastly, if the magnet is moved quicker, keeping the coil of fire fixed, you'd see a higher EMF being induced. So we could then say that the induced EMF depends on, number one, strength of the magnet, B, area of the coil, A, number of turns in the coil of fire, N, and how quickly you move the magnet. So you divide all of these with the time. And since the product of the magnetic field strength B and area A is the magnetic flux, hence mathematically EMF induced is proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux. And then introducing the number of turns in the equation as well, the EMF induced can be written as E equals negative N delta phi over T. Now, this equation represents all the factors on which the induced EMF depends. And this is an equation for Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. But an important thing to note here in this law is the negative sign. So why is there a negative sign in this equation? That is because the direction of the induced current. And there's another important law that is related to the direction of the induced current that's called the Lenz's law. You can learn more about that in the next video that's coming up on your screen. See you in that video, inshallah.